This schematic on Technic's website shows a clear path system with its accessories, required and optional. Each accessory has a small question mark by it. When you click, it shows useful information. This is helpful, but if you want even more detail, keep watching. We're going to discuss each accessory one by one. The only accessories you must have to set up and use your motor are a few cables and a free software download. You need a controller cable to connect your digital control signals, a USB cable to set up your motor, and an AC power cable. The first cable is the controller cable. It connects ClearPath to your digital control signals. Technic offers two controller cable options to choose from. The first is a 10-foot cable. It has 8-pin Molex Minifit Junior connectors on both ends. The connector for the motor end is overmolded. The other end has a connector with no overmolding, which we use to test each cable at our factory. Most people will cut off this connector to connect the individual wires to their control signals. But you can use this end inside the motor if you prefer. It takes up a little less room, and if you use the appropriate cable glands, the junction box will be fully sealed anyway. The 55 foot cable has overmolded connectors on both ends, allowing you to cut it into two cables, each with an overmolded connector at the motor end. The next cable is the USB setup cable. This cable plugs into your ClearPath motor and into a Windows PC running Technic's free motor setup program, or MSP. This cable is a 10-foot standard USB A to B cable. It's only needed during auto-tuning and setup, and it's then disconnected from the motor. You probably have one of these cables lying around somewhere, but this cable is nice because it's 10 feet long, which is convenient when you can't easily get the PC close to your machine. It's also a high quality data cable that won't have noise or connector issues. The final required cable is the AC power cable. Generally, all you need here is raw cable stock. The motor end of the cable goes into a screw terminal block, so there's no connector on the motor end. The other end usually is wired into the screw terminals of a circuit breaker. Depending on your AC power source, you may need three, four, or five wire cable stock. You can purchase appropriate AC power cable stock from many online sources. The wire needs to be 12 or 14 gauge. Stranded wire is easier to work with and more flexible than solid copper. To summarize, you will need a controller cable to connect your clear path motor to your digital control signals, a USB setup cable to connect your Windows PC during motor setup, and an AC power cable. The first optional accessory is a cable to route user-supplied 24-volt logic backup power into the motor. If AC line power to the motor is interrupted, let's say because your application cuts motor power upon an emergency stop, the 24-volt power will keep the motor's processor awake. So even if the commanded and or actual motor position change while the bus power is off, when bus power is restored, each axis will automatically move at a user-defined speed to its proper position as commanded by your application. This automatic position recovery feature makes sure each axis is always where your controller expects it to be and eliminates the need for rehoming after AC power is interrupted. If you want to make your own controller cable or 24-volt power cable, you'll find all the required connector part numbers in the ClearPath user manual as well as the part numbers for the necessary tools. Don't try to make these cables without the proper tools. You'll almost certainly end up with flaky connections and frustration. Normally, energy is directed from the motor drive into the motor, such as when accelerating a load. But decelerating a large or gravitational load can cause energy to be pumped back into a motor's drive electronics. If this regenerated energy is high enough, the motor drive will get an overvoltage shutdown. ClearPath integral horsepower motors use a proprietary algorithm to absorb this energy more so than other motors. And the RES-225 regenerated energy shunt accessory can handle even more. The RES-225 can handle 7 kilowatts of regenerated power for brief periods and 250 watts on average 
allowing controlled and emergency decelerations of inertial and gravitational loads without overvoltage shutdowns. Using two conductor 12 to 14 gauge wire, you connect the positive and negative terminals from the RES-225 to the positive and negative terminals of your clear path motor. That's all you have to do. The RES-225 is fully automatic and there are no settings to adjust. Any motor with a 3, 4, or 5 before the P in its part number will gain more than 50% more continuous torque by adding the blower option. To use the blower, you need single phase 208 volts AC, three conductor 12 or 14 gauge cable stock, and a cord grip for a one half inch trade size opening. In addition to standard face mounting, clear path integral horsepower motors can be foot mounted using the cast aluminum rigid base foot mount accessory. The foot can be attached to any of the three sides not occupied by the junction box. Be sure to note that the shaft center is 4.25 inches from the mounting surface of the foot. This is three quarters of an inch more than the standard for NEMA 56 and NEMA 143 motors, and roughly 0.25 inches more than the standard for IEC 100 frame size motors. ClearPath motors natively use digital control signals for best noise immunity, but some applications still use analog control signals. The analog send unit, ASU-FR510, converts 0 to 10 volt or 4 to 20 milliamp analog signals into a noise immune digital command that can be transmitted longer distances without fear of noise corruption. The ASU goes in between your control signals and clear path, so instead of one controller cable, you'll want two. You'll also need an analog signal cable and a DC power cable for the user-supplied 24 volt power. So, to get continuously variable control of a clear path motor using analog signals, use an ASU-FR510 analog send unit along with two controller cables, one analog I.O. cable, and a 24 volt power cable to connect to your user supplied power source. Finally, there's a component you might want to add but probably shouldn't, a shaft key. Many mechanisms are coupled to induction motor shafts with the combination of a shaft key and a set screw. This sort of fastening is marginally okay for single direction constant velocity applications, but with ClearPath's ability to start, stop, and reverse with high power and precision, you'll want something better. After years of seeing every fastening method under the sun, we've found that modern specialty adhesives, for example, Loctite retaining adhesive for cylindrical components, are an excellent solution. Used properly, it holds extremely well, but components can still be easily removed with a heat gun. Clamp style couplings and keyless bushings are also excellent choices. Contact Technic for further information, and if you still want to use a key as backup, see the user manual for proper dimensions and tolerances.